To get regular updates, subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon. Hello friends, this is Manohar Virar from Examby. In this session, we are going to see the Environment Impact Assessment's second part. And in this session, we will be dealing about composition of the expert committees for EIA that is Environment Impact Assessment and Environmental Appraisal Procedure in India and the main participants of EIA. Before getting into the lesson, please click on the subscribe button and be a subscriber to get regular updates from exam day. Ok, let's continue with the lesson. First we are going to see about composition of the expert committees for EIA. The committees will consist of experts in the following sectors. Ecosystem Management, Air Pollution Control, Water Pollution Control, Water Resource Management, Flora and Fauna Conservation and Management, Land Use Planning, Social Sciences and Rehabilitation, Project Appraisal, Ecology, Environmental Health, Subject Area Specialists. It also consists of representatives of NGOs and persons concerned with environmental issues. The chairman will be an outstanding and experienced ecologist or environmentalist or technical professional with wide managerial experience in the relevant development. The representative of Impact Assessment Agency will act as member secretary. Chairman and members will serve in their individual capacities except those specifically nominated as representatives. The membership of the committee shall not exceed 15 members. Let's see the procedure of environmental appraisal in India. An appraisal committee constituted by the Ministry of Environment and Forest to first scrutinize a project based on the data presented by project authorities. If necessary, the Ministry of Environment and Forest may also hold consultations with the investors and experts on specific issues as and when necessary. After considering all the facets of a project, environmental clearance is accorded subject to implementation of the stipulated environmental safeguards. In case of projects where the project proponents have submitted complete information, a decision is taken within 90 days. The six regional offices of the ministry functioning at Shillong, Bhubaneswar, Chandigarh, Bangalore, Lucknow and Bhopal undertake monitoring of cleared projects. The primary objectives of this procedure is to ensure adequacy of the suggested safeguards and also to undertake mid-course corrections if required. Sometimes, one or more natural resources becoming limiting resource in a given region and that restricts the scopes of the development projects. There are a few limitations in coastal areas. Coastal zone management plans are prepared by coastal states or union territories as per rules set by CRZ Notification 1991. Coastal zone management plans are prepared based on the identification and categorization of coastal areas for different activities and then submitted to the Ministry of Environment and Forest for approval. The Ministry then forms a task force for examining their plans. Environmental Clearance and Rejection Letter Procedure It's based on single window clearance. When a project requires both environmental clearance as well as approval under the Forest Conservation Act 1980, proposals for both are required to be given simultaneously to the concerned divisions of the Ministry. The processing is done simultaneously for clearance or rejection. If the project does not involve diversion of forest land, the case is processed only for environmental clearance. The time frame. Once all the requisite documents and data from the project authorities are received and public hearings have been held, assessment and evaluation of the project from the environmental angle is completed within 90 days and the decision of the ministry shall be conveyed within 30 days thereafter, which takes to 120 days of final decision from the date of application of project. Post-project monitoring Whenever a project is given environmental clearance, a set of conditions are stipulated by the appraisal committee on a case-to-case -case basis which have to be complied by the project proponent. The project authorities are required to submit a half-yearly compliance report to the ministry about the compliance of conditions stipulated. Cases of non-compliance of the recommendations and conditions by clear projects units are brought to the notice of the ministry which may initiate action against the project authorities. The main participants of Environmental Impact Assessment EIA applies to public and private sections. The six main players are 1. Those who propose the project 
to the environmental consultant who prepare EIA on behalf of the project proponent. Three, pollution control board. It, it may be state or national. Four, public has the right to express their opinion. Five, the impact assessment agency. And the six is the regional center of the Ministry of Environment and Forest. The salient features of 2006 amendment to EIA notifications are Environment Impact Assessment Notification of 2006 has decentralized the environmental clearance projects by categorizing the developmental projects into two categories, that is Category A, which is National Level Appraisal, and Category B, State Level Appraisal. Category A projects are appraised at National Level by Impact Assessment Agency and Expert Appraisal Committee, and Category B projects are appraised at State Level. State Level Environmental Impact Assessment Authority and State Level Expert Appraisal Committee are constituted to provide clearance to Category B process. After 2006 amendment, the EIA cycle comprises of four stages screening, scoping, public hearing, and appraisal. Category A projects require mandatory environmental clearance and thus they do not undergo the screening process. Category B projects undergo screening process and they are classified into two types. 1. Category B projects mandatorily requires environmental impact assessment and Category B2 projects which do not require environmental impact assessment. Thus, Category A projects and Category B projects undergo the complete EIA process whereas Category B2 projects are excluded from the complete environmental impact assessment process. Procedure for Public Hearing Notice of Public Hearing Whoever applies for environmental clearance of projects should request the concerned State Pollution Control Board to initiate a public hearing. The State Pollution Control Board issues a notice for environmental public hearing which will be published in at least two newspapers widely circulated in the region around the project, one of which will be in the vernacular language of the locality concerned. State Pollution Control Board mentions the date, time, place of the public hearing. Suggestions, views, comments and objections of the public will be invited within 30 days from the date of publication of the notification. All persons including the residents, environmental groups and others located at the project site or sites of displacement or sites likely to be affected can participate in the public hearing. They can also make oral or written suggestions to the State Pollution Control Board. Composition of Public Hearing Panel The composition of Public Hearing Panel may consist of the following. Representative of State Pollution Control Board District Collector or his nominee Representative of State Government dealing with the subject Representative of St Department of State Government dealing with the environment Not more than three representatives of the local bodies such as municipalities or panchayats Not more than three senior citizens of the area nominated by the District Collector Friends, with this we have come to the conclusion of this session on environmental impact assessment. There is one more session to follow on this same topic which will be dealing about public hearing and quality of environmental impact assessment and also shortcomings of environmental impact assessment. Please subscribe to Exambin channel to get regular updates and also press the bell icon to get instant alerts on your application.